Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I think it's about time that we talk about a very important technique inside of your editing timeline, and that is color correction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break color correction down into a two part tutorial. And in part one, I'm going to show you how to do a very, very, very basic color correction technique that you're going to want to use on every shot that you have in your timeline. It's a very simple technique, and once you see how powerful it is, I guarantee you're going to be going back to it every time. Now, in part two of the tutorial, what we're going to do is look at another common situation, which is where we have color issues going on in the spot. And what we want to do is we want to color correct them basically get in and adjust the color first and then do a color correction to it after the fact. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. So the first thing I need is a clip to color correct. Now, you'll remember back to the intro, I sort of said that every clip that you're going to be working on needs some kind of color correction and that is the truth. Every shot inside of your edit needs color correction whether you think it does or not. Because remember, in a lot of cases, cameras are put on their defaults, levels might be too high, they might be crushed. You need to make sure that you get in and check these things before you output them or before you export them because you could run into some real problems with the station telling you that your levels are outside of safe levels. Okay, so like I said, we need a shot to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my time lapse bin here and I have a shot down here from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD. Now this shot here is exactly as I exported it from the disc. Now you'll see if you take a look at some of the other shots that I have in here, they're a little bit washed out. And I'm going to show you the technique that I'm going to use to color correct this, and then I'm going to show you how that applies to pretty much any shot in this bin. And like I said, some of these shots actually look very good. You know, this shot here, case in point. We'll just come down a little bit here, all the way down to the bottom. Even these night shots, not too bad. This shot looks beautiful. But let's come back to this shot right here. Now, this is what most editors do in a situation like this. The shot is very washed out, doesn't have a lot of color inside of the shot. Like I said, very washed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard, and I'm just going to drop this into a new sequence inside of the sequences bin. Now, of course, I don't need any audio, so we'll just delete that. Okay, now, like I said, what most people do is they immediately hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette. They head right down to the image section. Let's make sure we come to the image section here. And what they do is they grab the color effect. And what they're going to do with the color effect is they're going to take it, they're going to drag it and drop it onto the shot, and then they're going to step into effects mode again. My shortcut for effects mode, shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right here at the bottom of the composer window or right over here at the top of your timeline. Now what they do is they come in to, like I said, to the effects editor. This is just for the standard color effect. First thing they want to find is they want to find the saturation. They take the saturation, they just crank that way up, and they go like, wow, look at that. Look how much color that has. Well, that actually kind of looks terrible. It really didn't solve anything that's going on here. Everything is still kind of washed out inside of the rocks. All we've really done is sort of added color to the horizon and to a little bit of the sky. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this shot. I'm going to show you the difference between this and what we're going to do the proper way of doing color correction or how I do color correction on shots all the time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's just step out of the effects editor here for one second. I'm going to create a new video layer by hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y obviously for all my Mac friends out there. Let's head back to my bin here. Let's take the exact same clip. I actually already have it up in the preview window here. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard again on both Mac and Windows to make sure that clip is selected, the entire clip. And we're just going to edit it into our timeline. Now you can see the difference between after and before. Yeah, it's kind of done what we think we want it to do, but it hasn't really. Shot doesn't really look that great. So here's what we're going to do instead. Now we're not going to use any color wheels. We're not going to use anything like that to color correct this shot. And in most cases, you don't need to use the color wheels unless you actually need to get in and make some color changes. In this case, I don't want to change any of the colors. I just want to enhance what's already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the effects palette. And you'll see right above color effect is, appropriately enough, color correction. What we're going to do is we're going to take color correction. I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here onto the shot. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to step into effects mode. I'm going to hit shift and Y. But most people think, you know, as soon as they get into effects mode, that this is kind of a weird way to color correct. You see, I have all this information, all these drop downs. I can get in, I can adjust stuff. 
not really how we want to work with this particular effect, not inside the effects editor at least. What I'm going to do is just close everything here, including the time lapse bin. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to Windows. I'm going to come down to Workspace, and I'm going to switch over to the Color Correction Workspace. Now, if you're working in Media Composer, this is going to look a little bit different because, like I said, I'm working in Symphony, so I have access to secondary color correction. But basically, what we want to make sure of is that we're in the Control section and we're in the Master section. Because what we want to do is we want to get in and we want to adjust Gain, Gamma, and Setup. Now, you might refer to Setup also referred to as Lift, Lift, Gamma, and Gain. In this case, inside of Media Composer and Symphony, it's referred to as Setup. Now, what do these exactly control? Well, Gain controls the white, the white levels of your shot. Gamma controls the midtones or the grays. Setup adjusts the shadows or the blacks. Now, how do I know this? Well, if you take a look over here on my waveform monitor, pretty much the way to look at this is whites are sort of everything up towards the top of the scope. Grays or mids are obviously right there in the middle. And shadows right down here at the bottom. If you take a look, if I grab the setup and I start dragging it up a bit, everything's going to get pushed up towards the top. Now, what's also important to keep in mind about this scope is that everything that is in green is inside of safe levels. Anything that turns white is outside of safe levels. So you can see the whites are actually, in this case, the sun is peeking up just over the top of safe picture. So we would need to adjust that. And I'm going to get into adjusting that in just a second. Now let me just actually undo what I just did here. We'll just send that back to where we had it before. Very nice. Now let's talk about the gamma. We're just going to pull the mids up a little bit. There we go. You can see it's sort of taken the middle section and sort of pushed everything to the top. I'm just going to undo that again. And if I take the gain and drag it up just like that, you'll see that the blacks and grays really didn't adjust that much but the whites jumped right through the roof. And really, it's you know not more so visible than right here in the actual uh, edit window right here, or the shot window, where you can see exactly what you're color correcting. And you can see that I can adjust these windows here to be whatever I want. This is showing me the current frame. You can see there the current shot, just like such. And as you drag through, or if you hit play, you can actually see, once you hit stop, you can see it update right over there. If you drag through, you get a real time update as to what's going on. Now obviously this is showing me the next shot, which of course I don't have. Now the reason you'd want to see the next shot or possibly the previous shot is if you need to compare, let's say you had two cameras shooting you know, two different angles and you need to make sure that those looks are exactly the same, this is how you can get in and compare things. You can see the previous shot, the current shot you're working on, and the next shot to make sure that everything looks the way that it should. But let's get back to color correcting this shot here. I'm just going to undo what I just did here to send my whites back, or pardon me, the gain back to normal. You're, like I said, you're going to hear me commonly refer to these as highlights, midtones, and shadows, or lift, gamma, and gain. If I refer to setup as lift, you'll have to excuse me. It's just sort of become one of those muscle memory things. Okay, so the first thing that I would do looking at this shot is I'm going to come down to where the sun is sort of sitting on the horizon because this is really where we want to be. And what I want to do is I want to adjust this because I know that when the cinematographer shot this, ideally what's happening is the light is shining on the other side of these rocks, and this should really be black. I really shouldn't be seeing anything in here. Or, you know, it should be a really, really, really dark gray. So what I want to do is because I know that this is going to be the darkest part of the shot, so I'm going to adjust the setup here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the slider bar and just start dragging down a little bit. Now you're going to see that really the setup does apply to the sky and to the water, but more so it applies to the darkest parts of your shot. So you can see that's sort of a big step from what it was to what it is now. It's sort of a huge step. What I'm also going to do once I've now got the setup the way I like it, is I'm just going to take the midtones. The midtones would sort of be, you know, the water, a little bit of the sky. This is sort of getting into the highlights with the clouds, but sort of the water and the blue of the sky. And I'm just going to crush that a little bit too, just kind of like that. Very nice. Now you'll see we're all still within safe levels. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the sun up to sort of almost about the 100 on our scope. All I'm going to do is take it and just drag it up like such. Very nice. We'll let go. We're, we're actually kind of, I think, about where we want to be. Now you see the shot looks very different than what it looked like before. You'll see, if I come back here, let's just make sure. Now because I know that this is almost pure white, and you can see where it's cut off there, I know that nothing else is going to go above that. And you can see now that we've basically color corrected this shot. Huge, huge, huge difference from what it was before to what it is now. And I really didn't need any color wheels or anything like that to do this color correction. I simply needed the gain, the gamma, and the setup, or the highlights, 
the midtones and the shadows. Now here's the big question. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to switch back to my editing workspace here. There we go. Now the big question is, like I said, I showed you, if I step into this shot, what it was before and what it is now. Now what's the big difference between how I just did this and the lazy man way of doing, doing it by just adding saturation? Well that's what it looks like with saturation added. It actually looks all bled out now. And take a look at that. A huge monumental difference from one to the other. This is really how I want the shot to look and how I really think it should look. That just looks like a washed out mess. Now something else I want to show you here. I'm just going to come back into the color correction here for a second. Uh, I was talking about sending these levels above the safe levels. So what I'm going to do just for the purposes of showing this to you is I'm just going to drag this way out just so that it sits way up here at the top. Now in most cases when you see something like this, this is telling you something immediately which is back off on the gain. So what most people would do is they would just take this they just bring it back, but you'll notice that, that as I bring it back, it's also adjusting the midtones and it's adjusting the shadows. I mean, granted, it's minor, but it's still doing it. Let's say I was really, really happy with the way that the midtones and the shadows were looking right here, or the gamma and the setup was, and all I wanted to do was clip this off right at 100. Well, how we would do that is actually right down here at the bottom, you'll see that we have clip low and clip high. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to start dragging it back a little bit here. Let's just grab it and drag it here. There we go. And you'll see that right now I've cropped that level off right there. Now obviously I brought it back a little bit too far. But you can see that I can bring it right back up here almost to 100. That's, you know, you can see a little bit of white peeking through. But basically what I've done is I've kept the gray or pardon me, the midtones and the shadow information. And all I've done is taken that white information and cropped it right off there. So now everything is falling within legal. Now in most cases I don't like to color correct like that. I like to actually color correct the way that I think things should look. And in most cases I do it by eye and that is, you know, looking way too washed out. There we go. Like I said, I think that is looking very nice. And now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you know what? This shot, you know, you sort of had it tailored like this. You know, this can't really work. This technique can't work from shot to shot. Well, it actually does. And let me show you what I mean by this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to find another shot here at random. I'm just going to come into time lapse and let's find, uh, we'll just double click through here. Let's see, we could even use this shot if we wanted to. Sure, why not? Let's do the exact same technique. What I'm going to do is clear monitor. We're going to take this entire shot. I'm just going to drop it into a new sequence. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to take the effect, color correction, drag it and drop it onto the shot. Again, we're going to come back up to workspaces, back to color correction. Exact same technique I just did. Now, by adjusting the setup, we're going to darken these trees up a lot here, and that's okay. So let's just not do it too much. That's looking pretty good. What we're going to do is just bring down the sky a little bit here, sort of inside the midtones. I'm just going to bring our whites up ever so slightly, which would be the clouds, sort of the highlights towards the bottom of the screen. And take a look at what I've just done. What I'm going to do again, just switch back to source record editing mode, and take a look at what we have now from what we had before. Huge, 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 monumental difference. Just look at the color of that sky. Now, can I do it with one more shot here? Let's just pick another one here. That shot's looking okay. Let's do that one. Let's do a night shot here, shall we? Clear monitor. We're going to select the entire clip. Be on the keyboard. Again, into sequences. Again, control and 8 to call up the effects palette. Command and 8 for all my Mac friends out there. What we're going to do is drag and drop this effect on there. Again, switch back to color correction mode. What I probably encourage you to do is if you do a lot of color correction, you should have this mapped as a shortcut on your keyboard. Again, the exact same technique. What we're going to do is just crush the blacks a little bit to get the sky a little bit darker. Now, that's a little bit too much. What I like to do in some cases is get in and punch in a manual value of minus like 10, for example. That's looking pretty good. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing, just like such. Bring the whites up a lot and take a look at that. Let's go back to our source record editing and take a look at the before and after. You can actually see it right over here. Easier way to see it is when I go like this. You can see at night, it's minor, but guess what? That sky is no longer gray. You can see that it's gray, and it's really actually, you don't really even notice it that much until I do the color correction to it. Let me just step back out of it. Take a look at that. Looks so much better. And of course, what's always important is that we check our scopes. You can see I'm actually above where I should be. But you know what? With these, I'm actually okay. So what I would do in this case is I'd actually just clip it back a little bit. And that was a little bit too much. I think we're good right about 
here. Let's actually see if I can grab it. There we go. That's a little bit much, but I think we're okay. So like I said here, and what I'm going to do is just switch back to source record editing mode. I'm going to come back to my sequences bin. You can see the exact same technique applied to three completely different clips, but guess what? It produced the exact same end result, which is a far better product than we had originally. Okay, now that's the most basic of color corrections without getting in and using the color wheels. Now, in part two of our look at basic color corrections, we're going to use those color wheels because we need to get in and make some color adjustments to a couple shots. Now, in most cases, the shots that we're going to use would be completely unusable. You take one look at them and say, you know what, no good, can't use them at all. But I'm going to show you how simple it is to get in, use those color wheels, and then we're going to use the same technique that I just showed you to finish that shot off so that you can drop it into any timeline and your client will never know what it looked like originally. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.